Hi guys, this is Jake from Island Worlds Ants. Today we're doing a video on the pros and cons of different ant nests. Today, we're taking a look at different ways of keeping ants. I'll only go over the basic setups as I know ant keepers find many different ways of keeping ants and the possibilities are endless. For this video, I'll talk about four different setups and explaining what is good and bad about each nest. I would really appreciate if you subscribe to my channel. So, here are four different setups we will look at today. The first is a simple test tube setup for founding queens in small colonies. The second is an acrylic nest, perfect for different sized colonies. The third is a white on nest, made of aerated stone that is highly absorbent. And the fourth is a natural setup, full of moss and lots of cool features. There are of course many other types of nests, but for this video, I'll just talk about these four types of setups. I'll cover the pros and cons and give a rating for each of these setups, covering humidity control, cost, spacing, visibility, and escape proofing. So let's get on to the first setup. This is a simple but effective test tube setup. This is perfect for founding queens and small colonies, as it replicates the environment they would have with just a single small space. It provides a fresh supply of water that can be drunk from the cotton. Before we go into rating the setup, let's talk about a few pros and cons. The pros. It can be stored away easily. It doesn't take up a lot of space. They are quite good at having a clear view of the queen, her brood and workers. They get a fresh supply of water that doesn't have to be topped up for several months. On the other hand, it's small meaning the colony will eventually outgrow the tube. For filming, in my opinion, it's slightly harder to record. Sometimes, the ants can pull the cotton and drown. Now, let's talk about the other factors. Humidity control scores a 6 out of 10. It can control humidity fairly well, but when trying to get it right with the cotton, if it is pushed too tightly, there might not be enough water getting through, and if the cotton is too loose, the water could leak. Usually with tropical species, or species which require higher humidity sometimes, you can place the edge of the tube on a heat mat, but in my opinion, other nests control humidity much better. Cost. Scores 9 out of 10. These tubes are very cheap. All you need for this setup is a plastic or glass tube with a cotton ball and water, ideally dechlorinated by boiling, then letting it cool down. Spacing rates 10 out of 10. The great thing about the test tube setup is it takes next to no space at all, and they can be stored away in a cupboard or drawer in the dark. Alternatively, the tub and tube setup, which is also cheap, simply adding the tube to a tub so there is a basic outworld where the colony can find food. Visibility scores 8 out of 10. This setup is great for an all-round view of the queen, brood and workers. This way, you can look out for things like dead workers, mould, and how the brood is developing. Providing you have a good camera or macro lens, you can get a close-up view to see your ants. Escape proofing scores 8 out of 10. I would say the setup is pretty secure, depending on whether you use plastic caps with holes poked or cotton balls which fit well enough not to fall out. Some ants can pull the cotton, so keep an eye out, and as the colony grows they're more likely to pull at it. I even encountered a Campanotus queen chew through a plastic cap. The test tube setup comes to a score, 8.2. Next is the acrylic nest setup. These nests can come in different sizes, varying from founding chambers to housing thousands of workers. These nests work great for just a single queen or large colonies. Humidity control rates 9 out of 10. These nests are great for humidity control. Depending on the design, most nests will have an entry point with either cotton or sponge, where water can be added. These nests are cleverly designed so that the water can be drank through tiny gaps, but also the moisture creates great humidity, and you can place the water in just one of the entry points. Cost scores 6 out of 10. Although these nests are great in my opinion, they do tend to cost a bit more, especially for a good quality one that is escape proof and won't leak. This setup gets a lower score for cost as maybe not everyone will be able to afford it. It really is worth investing in a good acrylic nest. This nest is an Ozant's nest from more than two years ago and has been cleaned and reused several times. Spacing scores 7 out of 10. This setup does take up more space than the test tube setup 
so it gets a slightly lower score, especially when having this setup connected to an outworld or test tube. Visibility scores 8 out of 10. Unlike the test tube where you will get an all-round view, with most acrylic nests you get a view from just the top, therefore viewing is limited, but you are still able to see the queen, workers and brood very well, and from my opinion, filming is much easier and I can get a really nice view of the colony. Escape proofing scores 10 out of 10. Unless a connector of the wrong size is being placed, or the nest is very cheap, there should be no reason for ants to escape from this type of nest. They are secure and well structured if the quality is good. The acrylic nest comes to a score of 8. Next is the Whitehall nest. This is also a great nest for keeping ants in. It has aerated stone which is highly absorbent. These nests also come in varying shapes and sizes, from founding chambers to large nests. Unlike the acrylic nest, these white on nests have different depths and levels, meaning the queen and workers can choose their ideal spot in the nest. Now, onto the rating. Humidity control, 9 out of 10. I have to say, I love white on nests. They are more natural looking and the shapes for the chambers can be much more customizable. Similar to acrylic nests, there will be an entry point to add water to cotton wool or sponge, which can then get absorbed into the stone, and this can create a great level of humidity. This creates a gradient of moist and dry areas. This does have to be topped up every three days or so, maybe more in hot weather, which is why it didn't get a 10. Cost scores 7 out of 10. Whether it is a homemade or bought white on nest, the price is going to be a bit more than a small acrylic nest or test tube, but it is definitely worth it, especially since you can get such a wide range of designs and sizes. This nest was made by Rob Hutton, and I'm very pleased with the quality and price, and it's not too expensive compared to other nests. Spacing scores 7 out of 10. These nests will also take up more space than a test tube setup. If connected to an outworld or a test tube, this would also take a little more space. The score isn't too low, as it can still fit relatively well in a shelf or stand, where you keep your ants, provided this is away from vibrations and light. Visibility scores 7 out of 10. The visibility in this nest is still good, but due to more natural designs, and having different depths, you cannot see the brood as well. But as long as the colony looks healthy, and is not being stressed, there is no reason to worry. Provided the nest isn't watered every day, mould should not appear. Overall, the visibility in this nest is still quite good. Escape proofing scores 9 out of 10. The reason for this is that, although it is almost impossible for the ants to escape, there have been cases of ants chewing through the white on and escaping. But if the nest has thick edges, there's not really any risk of this happening at all. The white on nest setup comes to a score of 7.8. Now, onto the final setup, the natural setup. This is so vast in possibilities for designs, and can range from a desert to a tropical jungle, or even just a simple dirt setup in a tub. What I love about this nest is it gives the most natural feel to ant keeping. And although you cannot always see the whole colony, the vibrant colours and ideas for this setup are great. Humidity control scores 6 out of 10. For this setup, it can be hard to control humidity if you do not have a lid, and the soil and plants soak up all the water. Depending on the design, if it is a tank, you can get fitted lids with one entry point to add water and food. If it is like my setup, then water can be added regularly. Cost scores 8 out of 10. Depending on the size of the setup, it can be very cheap, but also expensive, but if you can find the right materials and have an old container large enough, then it can be almost free. If having a large aquarium as a nest and then buying all the materials like driftwood and plants, then this can cost a lot more, but considering that the setup can be done on a budget, this scores slightly higher. Spacing scores 6 out of 10. This nest does take up a lot more space and usually would need to be placed somewhere with natural light or at least an artificial light. Visibility scores 7 out of 10. Depending on what kind of setup you want for your ants and the species, this setup doesn't provide a close-up view of the queen, brood and workers. Unless getting a custom nest where it has a partition of clay or white on underneath the natural outworld, then it will be harder to see the colony. However, this setup does allow for some beautiful plants, moss and other features. The upside to this nest regarding visibility, not of the ants but of all the creatures you can add, which will act as a cleanup crew. 
These creatures help create a biodiversity in this setup, and you can create your own little ecosystem. Just make sure the, these creatures are compatible with ants, as many insects will be taken down by them. Escape proofing scores 7 out of 10. Although this is personally my favourite setup, escapes do occur so much more often, unless a good escape barrier is provided. A good PTFE is required. This is a safe liquid that can be applied around the edges or the top of the tank, or tubs. If you can't afford this, for a lot of species even olive oil will work if it is reapplied. The natural setup comes to a score of 6.8. So covering the four different setups, the winner in this video is the test tube setup, simply because it is for beginners, it doesn't require a lot of space and can be easily added to a natural setup or Waitong and Acrylic Nest once the colony grows. Now, some of you may have completely different opinions. My personal favourite is the natural setup, but I also really love the Waitong Nest too. To sum up, no matter which setup you decide to go for, just make sure you have a good escape prevention. When your colony is outgrowing their nest, this is when they are most likely to try and escape to find a better nest. Whether you have a test tube setup or natural setup, just make sure you maintain them well and look out for mould, any possible points of escape, and make sure the colony is well fed and under the right conditions. Thank you for watching. If you made it this far, I would love if you comment below on what you thought about this video. I would also love to hear what setups you have for all of your ants. Here is what will be covered in next week's video. Three new setups for our colonies. Pink headed worker. What is this strange ball? A queen chewed through the lid and escaped. The first barbarian worker. I released my last year's Niger colony. Stay tuned for next week's video to find out more. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you guys in my next video.